Hello and welcome to another edition of 10 Count for UCN Live. I am joined by Doug Fisher of Ring TV and Mike Baca of UCN. Guys, let's talk about the World Boxing Super Series. Now, look, I'll admit, when this thing was first announced, I was skeptical, I was critical, I laughed at it. I thought, come on, $50 million? No way they're going to put this whole thing together. Man, this field looks stacked, particularly the cruiserweight field. Doug, are, are you surprised that the promoters involved, Richard Schaefer is the, the, kind of the, the chief of this whole My thing. My favorite guy in boxing. Right, right, your favorite guy. <laughs> are you surprised he's pulled this off? I mean, so A far, this bit. is great. Yeah, and, and here's the reason why. Because when they first announced it, they just announced it, and they had nobody. They didn't have a single fighter involved in both tournaments, cruiserweight and super middleweights. In fact, I think when they first announced it, we weren't even sure of the weight classes, right, no, right, let alone right. where the fights were going to take place and what networks were going to televise it. It was just kind of like... We only knew about the trophy. Yeah, That's we it. knew there was a trophy <laughs> named after trophy. Muhammad yeah. Ali. And I, here's how I viewed it, you know, and, and admittedly, I'm a hater. I was like, Schaefer misses the spotlight. He misses being interviewed, so he's just having a press conference about nothing just to feed his own ego. Um, but, hey, credit where it's due. He did raise the money. He was serious. He does have serious partners in uh, the Sauerland brothers out of Germany. And Haymaker uh, as well. And Haymaker promotions and uh, obviously the right financial backing. And they got it done. And what I love about this uh, tournament, particularly at Cruiserweight, is that it shines a spotlight over an overlooked division, at Absolutely. least here in the United States. In Europe, they know those 200 pounders, they throw down. Um, whenever we see two cruiserweights, world-class cruiserweights fight, it's either compelling uh, or it's all action. It's always competitive. It's a very deep and competitive division. And this tournament has pretty much every big name, every top contender and belt holder, except for the Russian veteran, Dennis, Dennis Lebedev. Lebedev. Yeah. yeah. Who shouldn't have a title right now. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, really, uh, Murat Gassiev, who beat him last year should actually have that belt. Mm -hmm. So really, I think most people are going to recognize the winner of the Cruiserweight uh, tournament as the real championship. And I think the favorite is Oleksandr Usyk, the Ukrainian Olympic gold medalist and WBO title holder who is immensely talented. But there's a lot, what I love about this is there's a lot of guys who are also talented that American fans have never heard of. American mm -hmm. fans have heard of Usyk because he's fought twice on HBO. They haven't heard of uh, Dunier Dordikos or whatever. Yeah, Dunier Dordikos. I know I'm butchering the Cuban name, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they have heard of Mike Perez, who was right, a heavyweight yeah, French heavyweight, contender, yeah. who's dropped down to 200 pounds. So he's kind of a dark horse in this. And I'm sure, Mike, you know of other uh, top-level cruiserweights there's, that are involved. There's, there's a, a yeah, there's former a, yeah, uh, the title Polish holder guy. from Poland. Uh, there's a Russian out there who's fighting Dordikos, actually. He's His a name, title holder, right? No, he's not. Oh, oh. Uh, Kudryashov. Oh, Kudryashov. Yeah, the incredible, guy with the beard, the puncher. He's, he's a slugger. power puncher. Yeah, um, all action. And he, he just avenges, only lost uh, just a couple months ago. Yes, he did. Um, that fight, that first fight, Dordikos Kudryashov is incredible. And, of course... Um, Dortigos was the last to pick because, as we know, there, this was formatted in a way where the top four seeds get to choose their opponent, which I thought was a very interesting wrinkle. I like that. I, 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 loved it. I mean, I would rather have it this way, especially because in this field there is no bad fight. Right. There, there's no way you can have a bad fight. Even I like though, it though. It kind of shows the character so, of the fighters, you know. So and they're yeah, pointing exactly. at, I want you. And there's no excuses. Right? Right. Like exactly. If there's an upset yes. special, there's no excuse now because hey, you picked your opponent. Yeah. The only thing that would be better is if they let the fans vote and, and pick. No, no I, I know. Knows. I, know, I but don't. You know, know. But, you, but no. you know what I like though? I, I like that the guys who get picked, it puts a chip on their shoulder. I it think does. when Usyk chose the former champ, Hook. Marco Hook. He's kind of like, oh, really? You think I'm a, you think I'm a weak link? Yeah, you think exactly. I'm finished? You know Hook's going to bring it because mm -hmm. that's just the and kind he of fighter always brings he is. It. He's been on the top, at the top, towards the top of that division yes. for, it's, it feels like for a decade. Yeah, right? he and a he's long, passed he a long his prime. Title reign he's too. passed yeah. his prime a little bit, but he's a comer. He's yeah. a slugger who's got a lot of world-class experience. Um, do we have predictions on this cruiserweight? I mean, who's your favorite? I'm, I favor Usyk. I favor, you favor Usyk? Usyk. Yeah, absolutely. I, I favor Gassiev. Yeah, he's like 23 years horse. old, yes. and he is a boxer puncher. Because yeah. he's got that power. I yes, mean, he, he does. just has that eraser. And the one thing about Usyk, 
he still, I don't want to say he fights amateurish, that, that, that's a misstatement, but he still fights in an amateur style, in my opinion, where He's he doesn't on his toes sit a down lot. on right, his punches. Yeah. Gassiev is all pro, and he trains yeah. there with, uh, up in Big Bear with, with Abel Sanchez, and they teach you how to punch with your ass in that gym. Oh, he does. So he's, I think those are your two top guys. And right? Gassiev but, proved in that, that title victory over Lebedev that he's not a front runner. He right. could fight 12 mm -hmm. rounds, and now he has 12 rounds experience with a veteran so world-class cruiserweight guy, yeah. under his belt. So he's coming in could to also, this tournament with a lot of confidence, more than just a puncher's confidence. Absolutely, and he could fight anywhere, because I think his last two fights, when he beat, when they won the title from Glowatsky, it was in Poland, beat Lebedev in Russia. I think, well, he is Well, Russia. no, no, Glo the Glovacki victory was, uh, that was Usyk. That Usyk, yeah, he did that. Oh, that's Both right, these, you're right, These you're guys, right. what are you thinking about cruiserweights? They, they, they have travel. passports, yes. They travel. Yes. And they're not and afraid I, to use them. This is a very international tournament. I think there's only one, one American fighter. I believe in this entire in the thing. entire and thing and super, super middleweight. Middle we should and talk let's, about let's that. Let's talk about the yeah. super middleweight class because at first it, it was weak, and then people were saying, "Ah, well, the super middleweight." So, right, they George added, Groves and a bunch of other guys. But right, but there's a few of these guys yeah. who are undefeated prospects. And look, Callum Smith. When Andre Ward went into the Super Six tournament back on Showtime, he was an undefeated. You know, he was more than a prospect at that point, but. A lot of people didn't know him. He was and unproven. He grew up in yeah. front of everyone's eyes in that tournament. We might see that from a Callum Smith or somebody like that That's in the super thinking. middleweight tournament. What do you think about this field, the super middleweight field, Mike? It's not the cruiserweight field. Right? No. <laughs> but uh, I think there's going to be some good matchups in this one, um, particularly the first round. Uh, the winner of Chris Eubank Jr. versus Arthur Abraham fills the last spot. And that fighter faces a Turkish fighter, last name Yildrim, I believe. Yeah, and he's pretty good. Yildrim can crack. Yes, he can. And he's a puncher. He's a complete action fighter. Yeah. So I, I'm really looking forward to that first fight. I think Eubank's going to beat Abraham. Eubank's going to yeah. beat him. Yeah. And Eubank Yildrim is. That, yeah, there's Eubank be will be. Fireworks. Yeah, wow. Eubank fight. will be tested a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, against the Turkish fighter, mm -hmm. the Turkish fighter doesn't have a victory over any like legitimate top ten super no, middleweight, no. but he's beaten a lot of solid guys in a manner in which you think. Okay, he might be something. This tur tournament is a perfect format for him to prove himself. Uh, my favorite in the 168-pound tournament is Callum Smith. I just think hmm. he's got the talent and the boxing ability. Same here. Um, but we're, we're going to see him tested the way he's never been tested. We're going to see if he can really take a shot, yeah. as a matter of fact. And then some of these other guys, it's weird. They're kind of like... The one American is Rob Brandt, Who's right? A, who was a middleweight. He's a middleweight, yeah. and he looks very comfortable at 160 pounds, so he's unproven at 168 pounds. And then this guy, Skokland, Eric Skokland, he's, he's, a, he's a light heavyweight. Yeah, there's two guys. And, and Jamie yeah. Cox, now he's, yeah. A, yeah. he's a natural super middleweight, but he hasn't fought anybody. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out a lot about these Absolutely. guys. We're gonna get a lot Hopefully of, the matchups are good. We're going to get a lot of questions answered. Yeah. And the one thing about the super middleweight tournament that – there's several UK fighters. So at some point, we're going to get some big domestic matchups in London, which is, other than LA, it's the hotbed of boxing right yes. now, right? So a little different than the Cruiserweight tournament, but at some point, we're going to get some UK versus UK matchups, and that's going to make it a lot of fun for the super middleweights. We don't know what the TV outlet will be in America, but there will be an American television outlet at the time we're filming this. We don't know. But that's all we have for right now, guys. Let us know what you think about this tournament. Are you as excited as we are? Comment below, like, share, subscribe. I'm Michael Montero with Doug Fisher, Mike Baca. We'll see you next time at 10 Count.